So for the astute among you, that was a question. Ooh. Okay, uh, so we're gonna be talking about how to ask the right questions and request help. Uh, mostly not about microphones, mostly about you know programming, stuff like that. Um, so who are we? Uh, I'm Daniel, I've been here for seven months. I got a week on Georgia, so you know I'm an old hand at this. Um, but yeah, still have no idea what I'm doing, so that's my expertise here. Ask a lot of questions, um, so hopefully I have some idea of how to do it. Um, and then over here, we have Vivek. Uh, hi everyone, this is Vivek Kumar, and uh, I'm a software based in India. And I have been in Expensify for a year now. And uh, yeah, I've been also quite active in asking questions and learning about the process. So everything is kind of new for us, and we would like to share that with you. Cool. Um, so some goals for uh, this talk, um, you know, uh, obviously I think we all kind of know when you ask questions, you're like handling a problem, you've got like a weird bug in your console, you're just trying to figure out like how something was coded in the first place. There's a lot of opportunities to ask, you know, all of the people in this room and on Slack and so on, uh, what, uh, you know, what was happening, what is happening. Um, and so we're trying to give you some tips and tools to make that a little bit um, so easier for people, first of all. So making it easy for people to answer your questions, making it easier for you to go through the process of asking it without having to do a lot of clarifications and you know multiple questions, things like that. Um, this is also going to help you just you know do this quicker. Again, like have more time to go back to your own workflow, be able to code stuff, design stuff, whatever it is, um, rather than handling a thousand question, follow-up questions in Slack, things like that. Um, and then lastly, you know, we're going to be better when we're working together. Um, we have such an active community already. Everyone is already very active in this, but like, it's so great to have a Slack where you don't feel weird about asking questions. Um, you feel like you're included, like we talked about on the first day of this conference, um, and that we just all have the ability to help each other and do cool stuff and I guess go to Mars uh, together. Um, so here's an example of a question. Um, I'm working on a React component and it's not displaying anything on the page. Help. This is a bad question. Ooh. Um, this doesn't really give any information on what's happening. You know, they're working on React, which is most of us most of the time in this room. Uh, other than that, uh, there's not really anything anyone can do to help. So uh, throughout this, we'll try and go from this to something a little bit better. Um, so uh, again, in that process, we're, we'll talk about what you do before you actually ask the question, how you actually ask the question itself, how you deal with the answers to the question, and then we'll have time for questions after that. Um, so there we go. Okay, so first of all, uh, I would like to make something very clear, that is, uh, uh, we at Expensify kind of uh, provide everybody a platform to kind of ask questions and make things clear. So feel free to bring any questions in the channel and we'll be more than happy to kind of help you. And uh, a lot of people have access to different channels, but I think uh, Expensify employees are kind of uh, included in all of these channels. So you will definitely have an eye on, like we'll definitely have an eye on the questions that you have asked and we'll be more than happy to kind of help you over there. So yeah, let's just take the opportunity and bring us and we'll be more than happy to help you. So, uh, so now let's say that you have been working on some of the, uh, some of the issues and uh, you do not have a way forward, right? Like you are kind of stuck somewhere and you need help. So before we actually uh, ask the question to the community, let's see what are the things that we can keep in mind uh, to make the communication more better, right? So the first thing is to kind of ask yourself, right? So, uh, and the philosophy behind this is, uh, if you know one of the crux uh, and the more uh, core principle of uh, Expensify is, uh, to um, um, about the talent, that is uh, you need to uh, uh, figure things out, like you have to have a way to figure things out. So we need to make sure that you're trying your best and before that you are, uh, and after you have done that, you are actually bring it, uh, bringing it to the people, right? So make sure you have given your best and uh, you are, you are uh, doing justice to uh, yourself and then you are bringing it to the public. public. So now uh, looking into the second point, that is ask the internet. So. Uh, let's say that uh, you have tried debugging on console, you are looking at the network logs and things like that, and you have been, you haven't still figured out the issue. 
So the next way uh, forward will be to ask the internet, right? We'll be trying to uh, Google search. You can try to uh, do the stack or flow. You can also look at the documentation of the technology that you're working on. You can uh, search for uh, issues on the Slack. So let me give you an example on this. Uh, we kind of use this uh, um, development environment called as Vagrant. And I think like almost every day, some of us will be having an issue uh, trying to fix something in the development environment. And, uh, but the cool part over here is that if you just give a search on the Slack, you will already have somebody already figure out that problem for you. So uh, it's good to kind of uh, search on Slack before you kind of uh, reach out to somebody for help. Now, the last is uh, the GitHub issues. So a lot of time, like uh, from my experience, if I have to say, uh, we see a lot of customer facing issues and uh, it's kind of tough to solve customer issues, to be honest, because you have to dig in a lot. You have to look at the log search and stuff. But what I have uh, kind of adapted is to first make a search on Slack and on GitHub issues to find out whether similar kind of issues have been reported before or not. And, uh, and yeah, like a lot of time it has helped me. So yeah, just kind of sharing it with you and maybe you can also use that in your day-to-day uh, -day life to make life easier. Now, uh, let's look at the third step uh, before you actually uh, ask somebody and um, help. And that is to kind of gather the context. So like we, we are kind of stuck on some of the issues and we have looked on the internet. We have also did our best to kind of get to the answer, but uh, no success, right? So now we are going to ask to the people. So before we actually ask to the people, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's like we have to kind of recall and uh, put together all the thoughts that we have put in uh, to find the answer, right? Like you can, uh, you can avoid any kind of false assumptions. So let's say that the site is not loading for you, right? So rather than assuming the site is down, what you can, uh, basically you can reach out to somebody and see uh, whether the site is loading for them or not, right? Uh, the second thing is uh, to gather the details. So as I have already explained, like uh, give, give some time and try to recall the facts uh, and the uh, effort that you have put. So let's say that uh, there is a particular function or the method uh, that you think uh, could be useful uh, for debugging. So you can bring that out. Uh, you can also share uh, a PR that you think could be like the culprit uh, of the error that you're facing. So yeah, like just try to gather all the details because we'll need that uh, when we present the question to the mass, right? So that uh, it will be easier for them to kind of help us back. Uh, and then the third and most important thing, which I do a lot is to, uh, like I put a lot of ambiguity in the question, so I use like a lot of they, it's, and those kind of things. So try to be a specific. So like uh, rather than saying uh, it's this particular function or it's this particular file, like you can basically refer or add a link to the file, uh, and then the people who will be reading your question will have uh, will have uh, kind of an easy access to uh, look at the resource and probably help you back, right? So yeah, like these are the. Uh, these were the three important uh, points uh, that you can keep in mind before you actually ask question to the people. And uh, yeah, now over to Daniel to talk about uh, the things that are needed uh, when you actually uh, ask the question. Cool. Um, yeah, so you have a lot of information at this point. You know what you were doing, what you're trying to do. You've got all the links, et cetera, et cetera. So like, how do you actually get that in front of people who can help you? Um, so, like a couple of things to keep in mind. Uh, the first is so to be relatively brief. You know, we've seen a lot, I feel, or at least I've seen a lot in Slack. Sometimes it's like a ten-paragraph dissertation on like this situation you were in and uh, what you're doing and like why something isn't working. Uh, usually, I have written those, and it's a mistake. Um, so try and keep it like pretty short. Uh, you know, people are taking their time out of their own work schedules and all that stuff to help you out. Um, so uh, try to make it something they can read in a minute or less. Um, and then the quicker they can do that, the quicker they can, they can help you. Um, another thing, all that context that you just got, uh, make sure you include that. Uh, again, this is sort of a balance with being brief. Uh, you want to make sure you have what you need, um, but not too much stuff. But again, like links to the files you're working on, uh, the situation you were in, things like that. Um, one way that might be good to look at, look at it, we've all you know put some of us way more than others, uh, bug reports in that channel. Um, 
And if you kind of think about, you know, especially if you're dealing with a console error or something not showing up as expected, like think of it like a bug report. So say what you were doing, what you were trying to do, what you expected to have happen, what did happen, and then including like links or some other proof at the end. Um, so that's kind of a good format for that. Glad this actually means something and is useful. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then the last thing for this, like a lot of us, or again, me, um, often are like, there are 15 things that are broken right now, I don't know what to ask about, so I'm gonna ask all the questions at once. Uh, and that's useless because people are like, sometimes people don't wanna answer all of them, sometimes they do answer one of them, but they don't say which one they're answering, and uh, you're in a worse place than you started. So try and answer, ask one question at a time. If you really do have a bunch of related questions, uh, you can maybe thread them out or put them as separate posts, but just make sure your organization makes sense so that, uh, again, making it easy for people to help you. Um, another thing to just think about, um, you know, this happens most of the time anyway, but just to call it out, um, you know, these are, the questions maybe it's like something that's nagging in your head and you're like, I can't keep going until this happens and that really bothers you and you wanna get it solved right away, but um, usually these things are not you know, the end of the world if they don't get solved right away, so take your time. It's worth it to take the time to make sure you're uh, putting the question out in the best way possible rather than just kind of blurting it out and you might, you might end up getting it solved faster. Um, if you do that. So, you know, check your grammar, check your spelling. Uh, one good way to do that is to read things aloud um, so that if you, you know, if as you're listening to it, it doesn't make sense, you can probably change something that way. There are also online tools like Grammarly and Hemingway are two good ones that you can like put stuff in and it'll make sure that it's clear and at a good readable level, things like that. Chat GPT, question mark, I don't know. I feel like some people are maybe doing this already, I'm not sure, but in any case, try it out. Um, and then last thing, obviously, uh, new dot, GitHub, Slack, they all have markdown in them. Uh, you know, maybe if you do have a big paragraph text, maybe bold the question, maybe line out, item out the reproduction steps, things like that. Um, just, you know, use the tools that you have. Speaking of which, the next slide, didn't remember that was there. Um, uh, just use, like, if you're dealing with a particular piece of code, put a code snippet in there. If you're dealing with an error message, put that in there. Uh, use links either to the files that you're working on or previous conversations in Slack or you know the GitHub issue, things like that, so people have that context if they need it. Um, and again, like bug reports, make sure you have that like visual, visual proof, visual things that will be helpful for people to really see what's going on instead of just taking your word for it. Um, and then last one, we'll speed through this, but uh, you know, we mostly are asking questions on Slack, on GitHub. Um, Slack is usually a good one for if you wanna bring in a bunch of people, if you're not really sure on like the best direction forward or it seems to be a really tricky bug. Um, GitHub, if you're already in a conversation with someone, it probably makes sense to keep that in the issue. Either way, um, really make sure to keep these uh, conversations public. Um, so like don't DM people on the side unless you really, really have to, I guess. Um, and that's both for you so that other people can chime in if they happen to have the answer, someone you might not be already talking to, um, but also for other people in the future, um, like Vivek was saying, like if people are searching Slack, if people are searching GitHub, they'll be able to see those conversations and be like, oh, now you've solved my problem from six months ago, that's great. Um, and one last thing to call out, um, there are a lot of us here. Um, a good thing to do is if you're working on a particular file, you see in the git blame, you know, Vivek has done all of that code, probably wanna CC him on your question because he, he might know what he's doing. Um, and also if you, you know, again, if you know that someone has worked on something, that's a good way to get, get an answer pretty quickly. Uh, and be polite, if you think, think something's wrong, if you think, think something's been coded wrong, don't be like, why did you do that that way? Just be like, oh, I'm curious like what your thoughts were, let's see if we can find a solution to this. Um, like uh, David said, or Daniel said, I guess on the first day, uh, assume best intentions with people. Um, and say thank you at the end, always nice. Um, so we go back to our example here, still bad. Um, let's go to the example, 2.0, sort of. Um, so this is terrible to read on this, boy. Um, but uh, calling out some things, so you're saying it on Slack, hooray, you've chosen medium. Um, talking about, you worked on a React component that's supposed to display a list of items, retrieve from an API, here's the code, you've got big code block down here. Um, having trouble getting the items array to populate with the data from the API, blah, 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 done this stuff, it didn't work. Uh, CC Vivek, because I saw you worked on this file, thanks. 
Um, so that's like a pretty good version of this. Is there anything that uh, you might notice that could be improved about this potential answer? Uh, let's go Jasper. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm sure there are other things that are wrong. That was our that was our bonus one, though. Of um, yeah, this is a screen screenshot. It would probably be way easier for people to test stuff out or see what might be wrong if it was actually just put in the um, Slack message itself. But still, relatively good. Um, and then just to help this out, we do, it is at the top of the channel and I'm sure you all saw it, uh, we do have like sort of a template that we made that might be helpful for, um, for doing this in your own work. Obviously you don't have to be exact, but this kind of calls out a bunch of the stuff that we've been talking about uh, so that you can kind of remember that you're covering all the bases in that way. Um, that's all the stuff we just talked about. <laughs> So uh, I think at this point, uh, you do know what issue you are facing and you have presented your question to, the, to one of these channels uh, like Slack or GitHub and uh, you're waiting for people to answer, right? So uh, what happens? Well, nothing, right? Because it's not that you put the question and people are jumping in to help you. But being an engineer, like we have to kind of uh, consider both the cases, like the worst case and the best cases. So in the worst case, you have no replies, but in best case, you have literally like people jumping in you and trying to help you out there. So, uh, so let's take the best case scenario over here uh, for the discussion. That is a lot of people are trying to help you and uh, trying to reply to your question. So in that case, uh, the next set of the uh, challenges is to kind of understand the answer, right, in general because answers can be in any form. So uh, the first and the most scary part is basically the questions as answers. So you have actually put a question and then people are following and asking more questions uh, under that particular thread, right? And you're like, I don't know, like, uh, you know, like you're kind of stuck uh, giving them the context and uh, answers for those questions. But I think that is more like a learning opportunity for us. That is, uh, people are asking questions in general because the question that you posted did not have all the context, right? So let's say that uh, they're asking, uh, what is the response that you're expecting from the API? So it means that while you frame the question in uh, the original question, you did not uh, put in the details of the API, right? So yeah, like just try to answer them back and try to take it as a learning opportunity so that you do not do the same thing uh, in your next interaction, right? Now, the second part of this is the confusing answers. So a lot of time, uh, like as we have discussed in the question part, uh, a lot of questions can have ambiguity, like uh, using, not using the file name or something and using words like it's, they, and those kind of things. So sim that applies for the answer as well. Like the answer itself can be ambiguous, right? Uh, so in that case, you can reach out to the uh, person who is answering your question or uh, you can basically uh, CC them in the same thread and ask for more context uh, on the answer in general and uh, so that uh, it kind of clarifies uh, uh, the intention over there. Now the third thing is uh, a lot of time uh, the answer makes sense but you're not able to understand it, right? And there could be a lot of reason to it. Uh, the one that, that applies to me is basically lack of knowledge. So a lot of time let's say that um, this happens a lot. So let's say you're working on a uh, SQL query and somebody kind of helps you with a SQL query and you're not able to make sense out of that long SQL query, right? So in that case, uh, just go through that again, right? Maybe try to uh, uh, divide it in parts and try to test it out on your local dev or something like that. And probably after iteration of time, it will make sense, right? And obviously you, like, you have the access to the person who has replied to your question, so you, you can always reach out to him and clear things out. So yeah, like just, just a note. Uh, now the last thing, and uh, I think we always do this, but uh, I just wanted to make a note, of, note out of it, and that is to keep the information going in the same thread. So let's say that you kind of posted a question for the help, and uh, people started jumping and uh, answering your questions. So you do not want to kind of bring that uh, question back to the main channel again because a lot of people try to follow the uh, slack for uh, for work so obviously th they have to go through these messages and they'll find it unnecessary and also uh, if uh, in future if somebody is going to follow that conversation they might not know like what was the course of the action over there so it's kind of uh, better to kind of put all the conversation in the same flow 
uh, that could help us in future and also for people who are looking for help. Uh, now, there is second aspect of the answer and that is wrong answers, right? So, uh, and also we have kind of included this uh, first point that is rude answers. Um, so, at Expensify, uh, like communication can happen at uh, any of the mediums like email, GH, Slack, or any, anywhere, right? And we do not see this uh, particular case often, but it could happen, right? So, uh, so to think about it, like how we'll handle this, uh, I think the simple way is to kind of put ourselves in their shoes and try to understand from their, uh, their perspective. Like, uh, maybe, uh, like we are all humans, so it could be that the person was in bad wound or something. So reach out to them, clarify with them, and you know, like uh, try to work things together. Now, the second thing is uh, when you are in a situation where the answer you feel is wrong, so try to work as a team. You know, it's not like uh, the person person has kind of jumped in to help you. So uh, you have to be like thankful to them. So just try to uh, be supportive of, supportive of one another, and also. Uh, like consider that it's the it's in the best intention and they're not trying to like uh, derail you from the um, uh, from the answer or something uh, so yeah like just work together and try to solve the uh, uh, try to solve and find the answer together and the last thing is like when you feel like the answer itself is wrong you can obviously bring in more people again like as uh, daniel suggested like you can cc uh, some of the experts that you think could be able to help us over here so yeah like these are some of the points uh, where uh, we can uh, we can see how we can uh, handle wrong or the real kind of answers. Now moving on to the next slide. Uh, so now you have like uh, the answer ready. Let's let's say that some other people have helped you to uh, get to the answer. So what should be the next course of action, right? So in that case, uh, what I would suggest is to first of all say thanks to the people who have kind of helped you uh, to get to the answer because they have taken their time out of work and they're trying to help you. So that's like really great. So yeah, just be thankful to them and reach out. Maybe you can reach out to them personally or you can just put that in the, uh, uh, in the Slack or the uh, uh, communication channel wherever it is happening. The second thing is uh, write it down. So I think this is one of our core philosophy that is uh, we try to write things down uh, for future references. Uh, and maybe someday we'll also have our uh, Arctic vault. I don't know if you know of this or not, but uh, GitHub kind of have this uh, Arctic vault where it has selected a lot of repository and put the code inside that. So probably, yeah, like maybe we'll, we'll import all our interaction that we have had in uh, Stack Overflow and put it in uh, um, like uh, one of our Arctic, Arctic vault for like future generation of expensive fires. You know, we never know. So yeah. It's kind of uh, our core philosophy, so yeah, make sure to kind of write it down on Slack, uh, um, write it down on Stack Overflow, or if the commission communication actually started on GitHub, you can basically put a link back uh, uh, to the Slack, so people, if they are following the GitHub later on, they will know where the communication actually happened, and they'll be able to get to the answer, right? And the third thing is like in some of the cases, uh, like I think you have been at, a, like you have been looking at conversation happening at Extensify and the thread could go like 200 messages or something, right? So uh, for future reference, if people are trying to follow that, they do not want to go through each of these messages, right? Because it may, might even take them like three, four hours to go through them. So if you have got to the answer, it's better to kind of write a summary, like if you have some time. Uh, and this would probably save some some of other people's time in future, right? So, like, just keeping that in option, I think it's better to kind of summarize uh, once you have gone through a set of process and find the answer. Okay, and uh, whatever we have discussed so far is more like a theoretical. You know, it's not like uh, you posted a question and you learned the pro like you got the answer and you totally learned the process. It's like uh, it's like a continuous process, right? You keep on ha you keep on having these kind of conversation and question and answer uh, uh, interactions, and with time you'll be able to improve yourself. Like we have been at Extensify for years and like for for a year now, and I, like I myself feel like I have a lot to learn, especially in uh, the communication part. So yeah, uh, like d do not get demotivated if you feel like uh, the communication did not happen as expected. It's just like a matter of fact uh, and matter of time, and you'll be able to kind of uh, skill, skill up and you'll be able to learn that. And uh, I think, yeah, that, that's, that was the end of the presentation. And uh, if you guys have any questions. Uh, okay, yeah.
Uh, yeah, that's a good question. So the question was, um, like, if you aren't getting any replies, how do you find someone to answer it, like an expert? Um, I, th I think sort of, like, you can, give, you can give it a shot by, like, yeah, looking at the git blame, seeing what, who did something vaguely similar, maybe, like, look back in the Slack to find if someone had a similar question and then just, like, sort of stop posting about it, which probably means they solved it. Um, you can also just, like, to a certain extent, like, spam people you've worked with, <laughs> I feel like. It's just like, oh, Jack, we've worked together. I'm going to put you here. Maybe you can help figure this out. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, I think just sort of, like, do your, do, like, internal research as much as you can to find out who's done something related to what you're looking for. And then also, I think, if it is in the thread, if it's, you know, you posted it, two days ago and you haven't gotten anything, you can kind of bump that thread and put it back in using that like also send to channel thing and that might get some new eyes on it too. Yeah, I think that's interesting. I mean, yeah, again, I, for for the record, uh, the, <laughs> the question was uh, like, because there's so, that channel is so active, how do we, is there a way we might like label or kind of uh, call out the questions that are asked in the channel? Uh, I mean, I think it could be interesting. I see like a lot on, like Reddit and stuff, there's sort of, the default is, you know, someone's asking a question and then they update the question with like answered or something like that. Um, so I don't, because the questions are so broad to start with usually, because again, it's like, oh, my, you know, virtual machine isn't working versus why did we create a component in this way? Like, I feel like it would be a little hard to label it on that side, but I think sort of showing like status updates in some way could be an interesting idea and then you could know like, oh, I don't have to ha handle this. I know we do this a little bit. Sometimes people put the little check marks as a reaction on stuff. Um, but yeah, it's definitely an interesting idea. Yeah, I think even in uh, one of our like internal channels that is Engine Chat channel, we have a lot of bug bot issues and things kind of uh, appearing a lot of times and the conversation that we, uh, that had like some of the values gets lost. So what I actually do is like, it should be based on the individual. So let's say that I'm looking for an answer, right? So if my conversation got lost, I'll try to bring it back uh, to the attention. So let's say that I know people being, uh, people are active during some particular hours. So I'll try to bring those questions hours and try to get more eyes on it. Or maybe uh, I'll reach out to uh, some of the people uh, uh, to, you know, like look, look into it like personally. But yeah, like I think this is more of a general problem that uh, when the traffic grows, uh, there will be more conversation happening and some of the important one gets, can get smith, missed. So uh, yeah, I think we'll probably we can uh, start some discussion on how to solve this. Uh, but I think, uh, so you're talking about the open source channel or the bugs channel? Yeah, so I think at, at this point it's manageable kind of and also we have like good amount of contributors trying to help one another and also we have internal engineers. But yeah, I think this, would, this could be something uh, that you have to look into uh, in order to scale the system, you know? So yeah. Yeah, just because there's so much in that channel. Yeah, that could be interesting. Um, again, just saying like move, move some of the stuff to like a design and like going through the proposals and stuff into a separate channel from that general channel. I, again, I think this is like, We'll sort of see how this grows over time, because, uh, like, yeah, if if you know, in two years there's ten thousand people in that channel or something, we're definitely going to have to split it up into different places. Um, but yeah, uh, it's certainly something to plan for for the future. Yeah, I think one of the effort was to kind of uh, separate the bugs channel. So initially, we kind of used to put bugs in the same channel as, uh, like, the where the collaboration kind of happens between. Uh, internal and external contributors. Uh, so yeah, like I think if the problem grows, we'll definitely kind of look into it and try to solve it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.